Assalamu alaikum wa wa barakatuh. Welcome to a new episode in the Proofs of Prophethood series. If you haven't seen the previous video, I strongly recommend checking that one out since it's closely tied to this one. When establishing the Prophethood of Rasulullah, it's very important to establish his sincerity. Proving his sincerity isn't really that hard of a task. However, I always like to ask this question to non-Muslims. What did Rasulullah have to gain from bringing Islam to the world? Now, some of the reasons people usually give include uh, wealth or women. We can quickly scratch off wealth because simply by reading some of his seerah, we come to the conclusion that he lived a very ascetic lifestyle, he only ate the simplest of foods, and never lived like a king, didn't dress like a king or anything like that. Keep in mind that this is someone who ruled over the Arabian Peninsula. Aisha narrates, we, the family of Muhammad وسلم, used to spend the whole month in which we did not need to kindle the fire as we had nothing to cook. We had only dates and water to fill our bellies. In regards to women, you have to keep in mind that he lived a life of asceticism. Due to this, they had to share the same burden that he did, and they had to live a similar type of life. In the ninth year after the Hijrah, he gave them the opportunity to leave him. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed the following verse. O Prophet, say to your wives, if you should desire the worldly life and its adornment, then come, I will provide for you and give you a gracious release. Keep in mind the Prophet ﷺ did not need to introduce Islam in order to marry multiple women. It was a common act during pre-Islamic times. Amr bin Harith narrates when the Prophet peace be upon him passed away, he did not leave a dinar or a dirham or a male or a female slave. He left only his white mule on which he used to ride and his weapons and a piece of land which he gave in charity for the needy travelers. Another piece of evidence that he lived a life of asceticism. Now, this life of asceticism wasn't only observed by him and his wives, but it was also observed by some of his close companions. Companions like Abu Bakr, Umar, uh, Ali, uh, Bilal, Ammar bin Yasir, Sa'ad bin Abi Waqqas, Al Nu'mal bin Muqarrin, Shurahbil bin Hasana and many others as well. Keep in mind that some of these companions were rulers, some of them were governors, so they had major positions, political power, however, they chose that same lifestyle. Now, these people were sincere in their beliefs. Why would they choose a lifestyle of asceticism, especially after coming into positions of power? Now, one may say, well, it doesn't matter if these people believed, it doesn't make the message of Islam true. I'd say, yes, I definitely agree with you. A person believing his message and his companions believing his message does not make a message true. However, this is a response to those that have doubts in regards to the sincerity of Rasulullah and the sincerity of his close companions. Remember, this is just a piece of the puzzle and a piece of the cumulative evidence. So stay tuned for more evidence, inshallah, in the following episodes of this series. Sub to the channel. I'll see you guys tomorrow, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.